Welcome chemists to this episode of Bale's Chemistry. Today we're going to work out if a reaction is feasible or not and to do that we're going to calculate the change in Gibbs free energy. This is from the AQA specification 1.8 thermodynamics and it appears on paper one of your AQA exams. So Gibbs free energy. It's named after Josiah Gibbs who developed the idea of free energy in 1873. This concept of Gibbs free energy is very complex just like most of the thermodynamics at A level but we just scratched the surface by calculating the change in Gibbs free energy which we also refer to as delta G. We use the change in free energy to predict if a chemical reaction is feasible, which is to say it's possible for the reaction to happen. We can use the phrase spontaneous as well. What we mean by both these statements is the chemical reaction will happen without any further change in conditions. We use the change in entropy and the change in enthalpy to calculate Gibbs free energy. If you're unsure how to calculate these, check the previous video for entropy or the energetics playlist for the enthalpy. So like most of these things, we calculate Gibbs free energy or the change in Gibbs free energy with an equation. The equation is delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So delta G represents Gibbs free energy and we measure that in joules per mole. Delta H is enthalpy change, which we've already looked at. And in this case, we also measure this in joules per mole. Temperature is measured in Kelvin and delta S, which is the change in entropy, which is also measured in joules per mole. Throughout this equation, it's really important we make sure we get the correct units. Enthalpy is often given as kilojoules per mole, and we must convert that down to joules per mole to make sure it all matches up. So when we look at this equation in detail then, delta G is what we're most interested in. If delta G is a positive value, then the reaction is not feasible. If delta G is a negative value, the reaction is feasible. This is one of the key things that you need to remember from this episode. Delta H then is a fixed value for the chemical reaction. T, temperature, is the only factor which we can use to change the feasibility, and then delta S is also a fixed value. So if we look at an example of calculating delta G for this chemical reaction, in an exam question we'd often have to calculate the values for delta H and delta S first. These are both covered in a previous video. Once we have these numbers we can just put them into our delta G equation and quickly work out a value for delta G. As the last half of the calculation, I rounded delta G to three significant figures and put on the units joules per mole. In most questions, it's often important to state whether the reaction is feasible or not. In this case, a negative value has led to a feasible reaction, and I've stated that clearly at the bottom. Earlier in the episode, I mentioned that the only thing we could change at A-level was the temperature of the reaction was carried out at. We need to identify at which value for T gives a value for delta G to be less than zero. To do this, we can set delta G to zero, and that means that T delta S must equal delta H. We can rearrange that formula to have T equals delta H divided by delta S, remembering that the temperature must be in Kelvin. So if we look at an example of lead reacting with fluorine to form lead fluoride, all we need to do is take our T equals delta H divided by delta S, plug the numbers in and find that the feasible temperature is minus 6.009 Kelvin. It's often the case in exam questions where we have to describe the change in delta G after we change the reaction conditions. In this case, it's important to be clear with what we mean. If delta G goes up, we must say that it becomes more positive. And if delta G goes down, we must say it's becoming more negative. That's it for today's episode on Gibbs Free Energy. There are links to the Energetics playlist which will help you work out how to calculate enthalpy change. And there's also a link to the episode where I talk about how to calculate the entropy change. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more helpful videos in the future.